John here, Ultimate Great Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. So, what's going on today? Uh, I'm down here in the workshop, finally starting to get moving on everything I need for Blade Show this year. Blade Show is in Atlanta, June 4th through 6th. Uh, it took a bit longer than I wanted for me to get all the Etsy order backlog clear and all that. But now I can focus my full attention just on Blade Show stock, which is good because we got quite a bit of uh, work to do. We got H13 hot cuts. I'm going to make a dozen flatters. I think flatters are going to do really well. Uh, so I'm going to make two dozen rounding hammers, all weights. So two and a half, or no, two, two and a half, three and three and a half pound hammers, a dozen each. So a total of 48. Uh, cross peens, all weights, 12 each. So 48 of those. Straight peens, all weights, 12 each, 48 of those. So we got a total. Of about 228 items, uh, about $30,000 worth of inventory, and we got about five weeks to make it. So let's get moving. So, first on the list are the H13 handled hot cuts. These are a great tool. Uh, this is my personal one. I am going to do them a little bit differently. As you can see, this has all been ground clean and uh, it's got that nice brush finish and everything. But it really doesn't go with the style of the rest of my tools. You know, it, it kind of sticks out and I don't really like it. So I'm going to try kind of a different method where I forge the cheeks and the struck end closer to finish. And the only significant grinding is done on the working end, similar to how I do my hammer eye punches. So to start with, I'm going to be working on pieces two at a time. I'm going to try to get half a dozen done a day. That's a good pace. It's a lot, but I'm not really killing myself. Now, H13 is some difficult stuff to work with. This needs to be worked between welding heat and 2000 degrees. It, uh, it will very quickly remind you how little you actually know about forging, but it's an excellent steel for any sort of tooling. Uh, my hammer eye drift is actually made at H13 and I've made going on 500 hammers with this thing and it's still going strong. So there's that. The reason it's great for something like a handled hot cut is, is it holds its shape up to 1500 degrees. So you can use this for cutting through good thick sections of bar, you know, with good heavy blows without, uh, without worrying too much about damaging the cutting end. Some people actually do buy these for me and use them for cold cutting, which, you know, I don't necessarily recommend, but if it works, it works. But anyway, let's get the forge burning. I forgot to mention dimensions, but the stock we're starting with is inch and three quarter round, cut off at three and a half inches. It's a little less than two and a half pounds of material. First thing we need to do is upset it, square it up into a square stock that's approximately inch and three quarter in diameter and go from there. Uh, you might wonder why I don't just start with square stock and skip these steps, and it's just because square stock is prohibitively expensive. Last time I priced out square stock, it was about four times the price of round stock. I've done the math and calculated the labor and everything, and it's cheaper just to buy round and turn it into square stock than it is to start with square stock. Alrighty, first step's done. We got our billets squared up. They're about inch and uh, three quarters square. But about three inches long, so next thing we gotta do is punch the eye. Alrighty, I got my punching and stripping die set up. I'm gonna mark the center at the anvil with a hammer eye punch off camera, just so I've got a point of reference. Uh, I really can't overstate how careful you need to be with this material, because as age 13 cools, it contracts pretty aggressively. And if it gets stuck on that, uh, that punch, I have actually broken that punch three or four times, you know, trying to rush with H13. So I got some charcoal powder there. Hopefully that'll help, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Alrighty, we got our eyes punched in these guys. On a hammer this size, I would do it in one heat, but uh, with H13 being such a difficult material, I did these in about four. So we're good to go. This one here is a little bit out of center, but that's really not a big deal. There's about an eighth of an inch of tolerance you can work with because the billets are cut oversized. And after you isolate the working ends, if you draw the cutting end out of whichever one has less material, there's still a good bit more there than you need. So that's not a big deal. But the next step is to go ahead and isolate and set down the working end. So we're gonna go back to the press using the flat dies and an inch and a half kiss block and draw the ends out to inch and a half square. Alrighty, we got the material for the working ends isolated uh, brought down to inch and a half square. Next thing we gotta do is run the punching die back through the eye one more time from each side just to open it up a little bit more and uh, get ready for the drifting. So 
So next step is forging out the cheeks. I want cheeks that are about two and a half inches tall. Here is where you really got to move. So what you got to do is bang the drift in out of the swage block, run in here and get this guy under these cheek spreading fullers I made. Uh, the reason you really got to move is because the drift acts as a heat sink and pulls the heat out of the billet. And as the cheeks get thinner and thinner, you have less and less time to work. So you really, you don't want this drift in that billet more than 30 seconds or so. So like I said, you really got to move. If it cools down enough to get stuck on the drift, God help you. Alrighty, we got these babies cheeked out. They're looking pretty good. Uh, just like before, on a hammer this size, I could do this in like four heats or so. These took about eight, just because uh, I really don't want to risk getting the drift stuck in this and that. But next up is to put the drift back in, go back to the flat dies and planish out all these fuller marks towards the struck end to finish, and then we'll start drawing out the cutting end. You know, that'll do it really. So just wanted to take a second and show you guys this thing I made really quick. It's just a piece of three inch square tubing. I made a little grate for the bottom sits in the slack tub just like that and you know now i can drop my drift in there to keep it cool without it falling in the bottom of the slack tub and having to find it so just a simple little thing that's really really useful you might want to make one if you make a lot of hammers Alrighty, so what we got here, we're just about done with this baby. You want to take pretty good care to try to keep your cutting edge uh, centered as you draw it out in line with the eye. Sometimes, however, if I can get you in frame, you still end up with it kind of tweaked, but that's not too difficult to fix and I'll show you how. So to fix our out of whack cutting edge, all you gotta do, flip this baby up in the vise, get the drift in there, That'll do it really. So that's pretty much all the forging on these guys. That last step you just saw me do was driving the drift in one good time from each side to create an hourglass shaped die. I like my top tools without a wedge, but uh, I like to put the hourglass shaped die in in case whoever buys them does want to put a wedge in them. So that's two down, uh, quite a few more to go. Alrighty, so all we really had to do on the grinder was thin down the struck end and clean up all the lines and smooth everything up. Next step is to go in with the die grinder and just break these corners. Uh, if you have hard edges on the top or bottom of your eye, they can bite into the handle and, you know, create a weak spot for it to break at. But that's about all there is to it. I went ahead and took these up to about 120 grit because what we're going to do is when they're good and hot, we'll bring them in here, throw them in the vise, and then take the cut brush to them. And just the abrasiveness of the brush will get all those marks from the sander out and leave us this nice kind of brushed satin finish. It'll look really good when it's done, you'll see. So, obviously, taking a cut brush to a hot piece of steel is dangerous. So if you do it, do it at your own risk. If you burn down your house, it's not my fault. But you can already kind of see we got that nice, soft, consistent satin over everything we ground over. So uh, I got the other three in the fire. 
We'll do that one more time, hit the uh, struck end as well as all the top and bottom and all that with the uh, cut brush as well. And then we'll be ready to heat treat these guys. Alrighty, got these babies nice and ready for heat treat. H13 is an air hardening steel, so the heat treat's pretty simple. But what I found through trial and error, mostly error, is that if you just heat the whole piece up and then let it cool on its own, uh, the cheeks and the struck end hold so much heat that they cause the whole piece to cool down relatively slowly. And uh, to harden steel, you cool it as fast as possible. That's more or less scientifically how it works. So usually what I'll do is I'll let these guys get nice and cool to the touch after the thermal cycling and the wire wheeling. And then we'll take a nice cherry red heat just on the working end. And uh, this end being comparatively cold will suck the heat out of that quick enough to get us a good, sh like hard, strong edge. So that's really all there is to it. It looks a lot hotter on camera than it actually is. It's uh, It looks like a dull red in person, but on camera it looks a lot hotter. So uh, we'll just set that guy up to the side to cool and that's that. See what I mean? And we got that nice kind of brushed satin finish over the whole thing. So we'll get the edges cut on these babies and uh, get them hafted up. Alrighty, got the cutting edges put on these babes. It's just a pretty stout convex, you know, nothing to it really. Alrighty, got our heads installed. We'll trim the halves off at 12 inches. Last step is a bath in boiled linseed oil just to help preserve and protect the wood. I'll let the handle soak for a couple hours and then turn them over, let the other half soak for a couple hours. Should be good to go. So what I got here, just a scrap railroad spike. Show you how it works. It's a good habit to remove the tool from the cut after each strike to keep the cutting edge nice and cool. Not do it really. Good to go. So here's just a look at the cutting edge after going through that spike. You know, just a little bit of crap on it, but all in all, it looks good. And here's the whole batch, ready to go. So there we have it. Uh, really happy with the way these guys came out. I really like the new design. They look good, they work good, and I got a dozen of them. So if you're going to be in Atlanta June 4th through 6th, you know, feel free to come check us out at Blade Show. It's going to be a pretty good time. But that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. I got a whole lot more stuff to make, so I'm not going to sit here and talk your ear off. Uh, Y'all take care.